A more secure way to encode a secret message is with a so-called one-time pad. With a one-time pad, you can have a different shift for each letter in the message. You just need to tell your friend what the shift was on each one so they can decode the message. This list of shifts is called the key or the pad. It's called the one-time pad because it's used once, then discarded. If it's used more than that, patterns will emerge, which could make the encryption crackable. With the one-time pad encryption, both the encrypted message and the key individually are just a random string of nonsense. But when you put them together, you see a secret message emerge from the noise. Let's do a short example. Say I have already created and sent my friend this one-time pad, which is usually written in binary. I love quantum. Then I would encode the message using the one-time pad like this. First, we convert the letters in our message to binary. Each letter A through Z will correspond to the numbers 1 through 26, written in binary. So A will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. Then this is what the message becomes. We encode the message by performing an XOR between each bit in the message and its corresponding bit in the one-time pad. If you haven't seen XOR before, it stands for exclusive OR. The XOR between two bits will be one if only one of the bits is one, and zero if they're either both zero or both one. So the first set of five bits in the encoded message becomes one, zero, zero, one, one. I'll leave the rest of the XORs for you to do on your own. This message is now just a random string of zeros and ones with no pattern. It's completely indecipherable by anyone who doesn't have the one-time pad. So what have we learned so far? Some encryption schemes are better than others, and some can be inferred by a smart person looking for patterns in the encrypted message. But a truly random key that shifts each letter in a secret message a different random amount cannot be inferred because there are no patterns in the message. Here's where quantum key distribution comes in. By using qubits, Bennett and Brassard came up with a way for two parties to agree upon a key and be reasonably sure that a third party wasn't secretly listening. This BB84 protocol is a little complicated, but we'll walk through it step by step. 